So ever since I've been a young man, young boy, I guess you would say, it's always been a dream of mine to own some dirt. Where I was born and raised, myself, we didn't have any land, but we worked with a couple neighbors and some farmers that were always generous to my family, and my dad would work for them and do stuff for them, and me also as I got older. And it would allow us to have access to their ground for hunting or trapping, things like that. And I always wanted to have my own dirt someday, you know, my own farm, maybe a couple farms if I could type of thing, you know, my own hunting ground. That's always been a dream. And, you know, finally now I'm 47 years old, but I bought a 70 acre piece of ground when I was about 41, I think it was. Me and my buddy Mark bought 70 acres. Here we turned that 70 acres over and we were able to turn that 70 acres into a a little over 300 acres here about a year and a half ago in Illinois. That's just been a real blessing to me. Being able to have your own dirt, your name on it, that dirt that's under your fingernails is yours. I wanted to do something for myself that, you know, where you're giving back to the land. Like, it's one thing when you can go into a farm and you can plant food plots for the wildlife, you can plant apple trees and pear trees, and bedding grasses, and you can do timber improvement cuts all that stuff you're doing is giving back to the land. When I hunt public land or somebody else's land, I just feel like all I'm doing is taking, I'm not giving back. And at the stage of my life that I'm in now, I don't feel like I need to prove anything to anybody. I want to be able to enjoy my last years on you know, this earth, enjoying what God has given me and blessed me with, and being able to pass something down maybe to one of my children or you know, my partner Mark's children or however. So having that farm is very important to me. And this Illinois property is really, I literally cried. I'm not kidding you. I shed tears the first time I stepped foot on it. Uh, I got out of my truck, I knelt beside my truck, and I thanked the good Lord for it. I mean, that's just how special it is to me. You know, I know there's this huge movement, kind of a divide almost, so to speak, between public land and, you know, people that own farms and that it's not fair and and I just really don't know where that's coming from, and I wish that I didn't see it. Totally respect the people that have to hunt public land. You know, they, they're not at that stage of their life where, you know, maybe they can buy a piece of dirt. Not everybody's going to be able to buy a big piece of dirt. It's hard to do. It took me years and years to, to get to that point, but finally made it. And I probably someday will still hunt public land, especially when I go to Iowa, because I've got some really great spots on public land in Iowa that I like. It's not over for me in that sense. It's just... My goal in owning a piece of dirt and turning it into what I want is really important to me at this point. So we closed on this farm in Illinois, you know, in 2020, in the fall of 2020, but it was late fall. And the farm had been kind of abused over the years. It hadn't had a lot of deer management done on it as far as, you know, promoting big deer or whatever. It was, it's got the cover. It's, you know, in some parts of the farm, some of the part farm needs improvements I give all the credit to God about killing this deer right now. He's given me this ability to be able to get on deer like this and figure them out and kill them. It's all him. I'm just the tool that he uses and somehow I'm hoping that he's using this tool for me to show my faith to people and that I believe in God and Jesus Christ and that that's truly what's most important in life. Big deer, awesome, but Jesus is king. Got him all shook up. I think I got him. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That sucker came downwind of me, man. And uh, that's just a testament to Faye's Black Widow product right there. I was this close to packing everything up. Oh my gosh. This is awesome. Yes. I just killed the biggest deer I've killed in a couple years. Leave it. First sit. He was on a string then, come work that scrape that we put the branch butter on yesterday, and he come right in. And uh, just power drive him with the mega meat. Oh my goodness. What a stud. We just killed a giant, Javen. He's yeah. dead right there. Oh my god. What a giant. We work so hard when we get on deer like this, and I mean, Dude, it's just amazing. 
What a deer. Dude. A scissors. You got it. <laughs> I told you it was, dude. We never really got to hunt the farm much. I hunted it a few times at the end of 2020, and there was a specific deer that I'd called T-Post, and he was the only deer I felt like would be old enough to harvest if I was to get a chance, but I never really did see him. A few times I hunted, he was there. Felt like he was on my farm sometimes, sometimes he wasn't. Me and Mark, my partner, we come spring of 21, we're turkey hunting, and out there turkey hunting, doing some stuff to the farm, and we find the sheds to T-Post. What a great deer. I mean, just really cool to find those sheds. Uh, it started that relationship even stronger between me and that deer, I feel. And, you know, I started making calculated moves at that point or thinking of what we could do to get ourselves in the roundhouse. And finding those sheds actually kind of put a piece of the puzzle together and it kind of solidified some of my thoughts of where I felt that deer was at. Yeah, Spartan camera right there. I got a little food plot here. And it's, uh, this is Illinois. And it's not doing the greatest, but it, it's just been so dry out here. It's been extremely dry. But we planted this plot back in this corner here. I've got a stand right there. I've got a Novix in that maple tree. And then I've got the perfect tree right here in the middle for these deer to scrape under. And uh, they've already started on it some, but you can see in the years past where they've, these licking branches, they've nipped them off. So I'm just gonna put some, doctor this up up here a little bit high and put some branch butter on it. Not a lot, just, just get some smell on it. These deer like to come up. They like to come up then and work this, you know, when they come into this plot. I don't have these deer coming a lot right now, but a little bit. You know, once in a while there's a couple decent bucks in here, but just trying to get a really nice deer to get consistent. You know, it wanting to use this spot or, but there's so many acorns on the ground right now. There's a lot of deer in the timber, but the crops are coming off out here. So things are gonna change shortly. Going into 21, we've made these preparations. We're getting pictures of T-Post. He's only ever showing up on the farm in a specific area and he's only ever there you know, a day, a night or two, and that's it. Then he's gone for a while, then he comes back. In my strategy, I'm like, all right, I've got basically three things I've got to kind of put in place here. I have to have cameras on scrapes, and I have to have those cameras on scrapes in areas where I feel that it's close to his bedding area when he's on the farm or where he comes into the farm so I can tell when he's around and when he's not. And that's where these Spartan cameras are really helpful for me because, you know, I can put them in areas that I don't have to walk into. I'm back in, you know, I'm in Ohio at this point and I just harvested Roman. And I was actually there with my wife and she was being a doll and taking pictures, helping me with the pictures with Roman and getting all that stuff done for the show. And then I had to get him, you know, skinned out and cleaned up and whatnot. And while I was doing all that, we took a little break and I was just kind of going through some of, on my Spartan app, I was going through some of my pictures and decided to check the cameras in Illinois and wouldn't you know it on one of the scrapes uh, where I'd made a black widow mock scrape down in this bottom close to the bedding area what I felt was the bedding area close to where T-Post like to be there he is eight o'clock in the morning that's all I needed to know because I'm like all right this is the first picture I've had of him on the farm in probably a week and it's in daylight that tells me the mood that he's in and what he's doing I didn't have a stand anywhere close to that scrape, but it told me that he was on the farm. So at that point, I kind of knew where I needed to be somewhat 
or where my chances were going to be highest. Basically, we finished up what we needed to do. I packed the truck up and I headed to Illinois. Well, <clears throat> so what I'm doing, I'm going to walk back to the corner of this plot. A lot of times I'll drive something like this in farm country. Uh, a lot of times I'll leave it run. I'm not leaving it run today because i got to do some talking here. But a lot of times I'll leave it run while I do what I'm doing. But I want to put a stick and pick and a camera up back here in a different spot. I want to freshen up the scrape that I started back here earlier in the year. And I made a social post about that. But you can see the transition from green to steamy beans. And now I know a lot of people are like, oh, you're hunting a managed farm. So, of course, you can kill big deer. But this is first, the first time I've ever hunted this farm um, this year. So, period. I mean, I sat it twice last year um, in the wintertime. Uh, but I never hunted it in the fall. I've been running cameras all year, just doing my homework and working at it. I'm just trying to strategize a plan and giving back to the land. Everybody's on this whole public land movement, or if you don't hunt public land, you're a big freaking sissy or whatever. Well, I grew up hunting public land and all that, but my dream has always been to own my own dirt. And so me and a buddy of mine, we bought some dirt in Illinois. And feel blessed that, you know, the Lord gave me the ethic to work so hard that I was able to get somewhere where I could buy some dirt. So this is a dream of mine to come true right here. And then actually to have some big deer to hunt on my own dirt. I mean, this is special to me. Um, but I respect people that hunt public land. But I grew up doing the same thing, hunting private land, public land, anywhere I could knock on doors. This just so happens to be a farm that I actually have my name on it now. And I love that idea. And so I get to do what I want to it. So it really means something to me. And I don't care where you live or where you hunt. A mature deer is a trophy deer. Score doesn't mean anything, but mature deer all over the country are different sizes. So trophies in the eye of the beholder and in the area that you live. It's not about whatever, but all I can tell you is, I don't care where you at, where you're hunting, how much private land or managed land you hunt. If you're hunting Boone and Crockett sized deer, or six, five and a half, six and a half plus year old deer, you've got to be a good hunter. They're not just tame deer. You know, I hear these guys talking about, well, anybody can kill those kind of deer. No, you can't. Not everybody can do that. But I'm trying to teach the people that watch Whitetail Edge what you can do. And these tactics work everywhere. Yes, you can't plant food plots everywhere or leave food stand everywhere. Um, but you can work deals out with farmers or private landowners to leave some beans. You know, work for it, pay for it, whatever you want to do. It's all up to you what you want. And you make your own destiny is how I look at it. But anyways, with that being said, and I only said that because I just see so much on social media anymore about, you know, guys bashing people that are hunting farms like this instead of hunting a piece of public land where there's one buck per seven square miles. And uh, so anyways, I'm done hunting that kind of stuff. I did it growing up, killed booners on it, um, videoed it when I was with the juries, showed all that stuff on video. So... I've proven myself I don't need to do it anymore. But these deer are hunted by my neighbors. Farm next door, they're hunting these deer. Another guy hunts across the valley. I mean, these deer all get hunted, so it's not like they're tame deer by any means. But I try to not pressure my deer as much as I can now that I own this farm. And so that when the time is right, like the red moon phase this week, they will maybe get up on their feet in daylight and walk around a little bit. I started this scrape back in September, right here, under this black oak, and also underneath this big white oak here, and I got a scrape tree right out here in the middle of the tree, which happened to just be there, but um, I started to scrape under that one too, and they're hitting them all, so I'm just going to freshen this one up with some branch butter, my camera's falling over where they've already been working this branch. Fresh one right there. They'll come up here and they'll just take their antlers and they'll rake in these things, do all that kind of stuff. I'm telling you, this stuff fires them up, this branch butter. Upon arriving in Illinois, you know, I had some farm work to do, some trails that needed cleared on the north end of the farm. I knew it wasn't gonna interfere with T-Post and I wasn't gonna be able to hunt until the evening I already had an Ovic stand hung close to a Black Widow mock scrape on a little finger that was a little clover plot 
you know, at the end of this little, you know, long skinny finger field. But this little plot led into a nice ridge that went right off into a bunch of cut timber that had a bunch of bedding on it. And I was positive that that's where T-Post was going to be. So my thought process was just get onto that plot. There was green food source, you know, clover and chicory right next to some standing beans. Well, it's that day. It's a couple days later after Dr. No Scrapes up. Bucks are moving through there really nicely, but it's all nighttime. I got one picture of T-Post this uh, yesterday morning down in the valley. First time in daylight in a long time, and he was actually making a scrape by my other tree stand down there. So, and that's only like 100 yards away, 150. So I'm really excited because the wind I got tonight and with this red moon phase, he should pop up into this plot that's down here. So I got about a 250 yard walk. I'm gonna slide down in there and see what I can make happen. It's a good sign. There's a lot of buck tracks right through here. As you can see, I'm self filming myself today. moon phase still it was just the start of it it was three days in and the moon was peaking two hours before dark so I felt like that's that's my best time you know two hours after daylight or two hours before dark and I'm like all right we're in the chips well she got by me didn't get me her fawn actually came from over here on the other side her fawn's actually with her now Oh, there's a little buck coming. You, you watch, he's gonna push her around the field here.
man, I had a super eventful evening. I mean, deer were moving heavy. I passed up a really nice nine pointer, uh, a couple other small deer. Just, it was an incredible evening and it was really getting down to the wire and I'm like, man, I can't believe I didn't see that deer. I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I can just hear noise to my left. And I look back in the timber and I'm self filming, so this makes it hard. And I can see a big dark body deer and all of a sudden I seen him turn his head and I knew right away it was T-Post. I can see him back here in the woods. He's standing right on the edge of the bedding area. So I'm just waiting patiently, trying to get my camera in position because I know I'm not going to be able to move too much when he gets too close. Sure enough, he comes right out, turns, comes right to that scrape and just starts thrashing it. <laughs> just awesome to watch a giant animal of this caliber in his element, not knowing he's being hunted, just doing his thing and showing his dominance and how he's king of this area when he's there. We had one lone tree in the middle of this plot that we left just so they could scrape under it. And I, you know, freshened that scrape up and he was headed right to it. Yes! 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 I just smoked that big boy. He's done right there. He's trying to get up out of it and he ain't doing it. He is done. Thank you, Lord. Oh my gosh. I just killed T-Post. Yes. Yeah, baby. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I just shot T-Post. Oh. I don't believe it. First sit. Yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. You are so good to me. Holy smokes! I don't believe it. Oh, he is a giant. That's the biggest deer I've shot in a while. Holy smokes, all I was doing was just like, Ben, you've got to make a good shot on this one. Get him stopped and make a good shot. He was headed to my scrape tree and I needed to get him shot before he got there. That's just all there is to it. Oh my gosh, I drilled him. The mega meat just yes. destroyed him. He's dead in this ravine over here. I can't see him, but he tumbled into that ravine 40 yards away, max. I saw him trying to climb up the other side and he slid right back down and now he's done. Yes, I can't believe it. <sighs> what a week I'm having. I just killed Roman the other day. I drive out here, I get in the truck. I'm like, dude, I got to get to Illinois. It's Red Moon week. The moon guides saying red moon it's time to get in the truck i had to get roman taken care of had a little bit of work yet to do but i was packed up after we got pictures of him and everything did some work and i packed my truck up and mel's like you're leaving now and i'm like yeah i need to just get out there i was gonna wait till like three the next morning and i'm like nope i'm gonna go and i'm so glad i did because i got out here in time um i got in at like one o'clock last night um, this morning, I should say. I slept for a while. I got up, did a little work around the farm, had some trees to cut up, and uh, but it was at the other end of the farm. And I was like, I'm gonna hunt this afternoon on this red moon. And here we are. And I just killed 
the biggest deer I've killed in a couple years on my own dirt. That feels so good. <sighs> so one thing I want to really touch on here is that was my first sit of 21 on that farm. If you do your homework, you monitor, you prepare by doing mock scrapes, they all have weaknesses and they're gonna give them up to you. Now, I was gonna be headed there anyways. That cell cam just kinda of happened to give me the 100% information that I needed to know that, you know, T-Post was around, he was on his feet. By playing your cards, whether you're hunting public land or you're hunting private land, if you use that system with these mock scrapes and you know low intrusion factor you know that's one thing i learned hunting public land you can get close to their bedding but i feel like if you're in there too much then they move off and it's hard to pinpoint a big deer on public land as it is so you try to like avoid bumping them out all the time you know you kind of want to try to get the dupe on them on the edge of it or on their way out and then that way once they get past you for the night if you weren't able to get a shot or you didn't see them you can slip out the back way and they never really knew you were there well you're not going to believe it but i did it again and i'm in illinois now got my deer taken care of yesterday jumped in the truck and i headed to illinois after deer i called t-post and i just killed him tonight on the red moon moon guide black widow mock scrapes novix tree stand and I killed him with a G5 with a prime. Absolute hammer, six by six. I mean, look at that dude. Look at the hole that thing put in him. <laughs> My stand is literally right over there. He just barely made it across the plot. Thank you, Lord. The blessings you give me, I do not deserve. Killing a deer like T-Post on my own farm was just really special to me. I mean, it was it was just kind of a, a bunch of years all brought together into one moment of dreaming and working hard and trying to reach a goal, and that goal would happen. A few of the key things that I look for in a piece of land, obviously, are gotta have thick cover or a place that you can make thick cover. Water, you need a water source on your farm and I feel you need some food sources. My favorite way to access a hunting farm is from the top. The way you keep your wind consistent, the deer bedded off the edges, down in, less likely to get onto you before you know dark. You can move around the farm a little easier. Those are some of the major things I look for in neighbors. I try to do a little research about neighbors and stuff before I decide to buy something. Now I've got two bucks on the ground, two giant deer, and I've still got two tags in my pocket. One for Kansas, and still got a tag in Illinois because as a landowner, I can shoot a landowner tag buck, and I can shoot a non-resident tag deer. And little did I know, you know, what this season was turning into in my mind, you know, or what it was gonna end up turning out to be. Look at the hole that thing put in him. Thank you, Lord. The blessings you give me, I do not deserve.